here I am back again, and finally, I can conclude my finale of my Halloween special. I know I'm a little late to this one, but I've been bouncing back and forth between a lot of things lately. Finally, I can conclude my post-finale of my third annual Halloween special, concluding it with Sleepaway Camp and the exorcist uh, uh first off uh i haven't done anything like this in a while since i've done my review i mean uh, uh since i've done this for the star wars prequels like months ago with my buddy austin you've seen him before i mean he's collaborated with me on several videos on my channel so yeah this is definitely going to be a lot of fun so i'll start off with sleepaway camp now, first off when it comes to sleepaway camp uh the first thing that that comes to uh, <clears throat> that will mostly come to your mind when you first watch it you're like uh, this could probably be a ripoff of the friday the 13th movies but it really fucking isn't it's just i mean it's good enough to be its own movie and uh i'll admit that it does suffer a lack of character development but it does have at least a few kills, and the big twist ending that has made it so memorable over the years. And Felissa Rose's performance as Angela Baker, and I might get into some spoilers here, so you have been warned. But anyway, Felissa Rose's performance as Angela Baker, I've really liked her performance because, uh, and the funny thing is, she. I mean, she doesn't have a line of dialogue until, like, the 30-minute mark of the film. And uh, mostly she just acts by using her body language. And that's something that, like, very few actors can pull off very well. And she does it like a pro, and I have a lot of respect for her for that. And as for the kills in the film, there are some, I mean, that... Uh, they're kind of a mixed bag for me, honestly. Though the practical effects, I mean, those I definitely have a lot of respect of. I mean, I do, I do have a lot of respect for the practical effects. But there's one specific kill that I think is probably more memorable. And, bro <laughs> and it mostly involves a hair curler. And if you've seen the film, you probably know what the one I'm talking about. And the how the how a certain victim is killed with a hair curler i don't want to like give too much away but i mean i'll go into some like mild spoilers um just the well you probably know what i mean but uh, f uh at the time it was let ambiguous with the uh, uh how this specific victim is killed I mean, because we have these care. I mean, like a few characters. I mean, you have like a bunch of uh, people at this camp who are nothing but rude and mean to Angela. Then some of them can be complete bitches and assholes. And uh, at first, when you watch the film, unless you didn't see it, you cut. I mean, you begin to suspect who the killer can possibly be, and then, in the end, it's revealed that Angela is the killer, and also, <laughs> strangely enough, she was raised to be Angela Baker, well, in fact, she is... Uh, Peter Baker, uh, Angela's brother, while the real Angela Baker was killed in the beginning of the film in a boat accident. And this reveal has been talked about to death by movie uh, reviewers for years. And I'm just like, every time I watched that scene, I mean, the first time I watched this scene, I was like, good God. Um, I didn't want, I mean, I didn't watch, like, any reviews or spoilers before seeing this scene, but the first time I watched this, I was like, I did not see that coming. I was like, holy shit. And I bought this on Blu-ray, um, right around the time I was uh, doing my Halloween special on October, and I really liked this film for what it was. I mean, it wasn't... 
At first, when I watched it, I thought this was going to be a Friday the 13th ripoff, but it really wasn't. It has, uh, uh, it does have some things to, for the film to be its own thing. And that's something that I have a lot of respect for. And while some characters uh, aren't really all that good, or at least a bit memorable, uh, Felicia Rose's performance is good for the most part. And I really like the, the film score as well. It's something really memorable. But that's as far as I'm going to give it. A, 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 that's as far as positives go for the film, as well as the twist ending. That's just, holy shit. I'm going to give Sleepaway Camp a B. So I definitely recommend checking it out if you are a fan of horror. Now, let's get on to the big one. Now, before I get on to my final thoughts on The Exorcist, I wanted to tell you all my personal experience watching this film for the first time as a kid. Um, this was... I watched this, like, around the time when I was starting to really love horror movies. I loved horror films basically my entire life and um, mostly when I was like six I mean at least like five or six years old it was like somewhere in that area I was mostly a fan of the classic universal monster films as well as films that like involved like vampires and werewolves and right around the time when I was like 10 or 11 years old that's when I started to uh, gain my love for slasher films such as Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream, Chucky, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and various other slasher films that you can probably think of on the top of your head. But when it comes to the supernatural horror films, that never really uh, crossed my mind. But it wasn't really until I was like 12 years old. Uh, right, It was right around like Halloween time uh, that my dad showed me The Exorcist. Um, I didn't watch the theatrical cut the first time. I instead watched the director's cut. And for the first time, I, when, my, when my dad showed this to me, at first I thought the film, for the most part, at least like, like the first 45 minutes of the film, was really boring. But it wasn't really until we got to the halfway point where I was like, okay, this really isn't all that bad. And I was like, you know what? There's something more to this than just than this just being a full-fledged horror film. Because mostly, I mean, for one, when I first watched The Exorcist, I mean, first, I mean, when I watched the first uh, 45 minutes of the film, I thought it was boring. But when I got to the end, I loved it. It's one of my favorite horror films ever made, and it still is. And I think it mostly comes down to the performances, the story, the direction, the score, the cinematography, and amazing makeup work, especially for the time. And it's just, huh. And when you look uh, back on the, like the history of back when this film was like first released, uh, most people back when they first saw it, even back then, they took their kids to see this film. I mean, I mean, it wasn't rated R as far as I've looked up on the internet. I mean, I've done some research, and I'm like, you took your kids to see this movie? <laughs> that sure as hell scarred them for life. Um, I think at the time they, I mean, uh, Warner Brothers uh, had the, the extras uh, rated PG, but after its opening weekend, it got an R rating, which... I honestly do not blame them because when you have scenes like uh, you have like a, a girl who is being possessed, like saying various uh, swear words like fuck and kind and stuff like that. And the probably the most disturbing scene in the film is when you see Reagan brutally masturbating herself with a crucifix. Uh, that's as far as it goes for the extreme for me. I mean, that's like the biggest issue that I have with that film. I mean, I'm Catholic, and uh, that's the one. That's the one scene in the film that I really didn't like. It's just, uh, uh I mean, there's like a, a few. I mean, I have like my limits when it comes to like levels of violence. I mean, um, I didn't really consider it. Uh, that scene violence per se i just found it really 
disturbing and very unnecessary in my opinion. That's just... Ugh. We all have our limits when it comes to certain things. And that was kind of like uh, the moment where it kind of like reached that limit for me. I mean, that's that's the way I am when it, when it comes to certain films. And when it comes down to the performances, there's just, there is no fault in this cast. I mean, no flaws whatsoever. This is, a, I mean, I mean, mostly when it comes to the four main players. I mean, uh, Ellen Bernstein, I hope I said that right. Jason Miller, Linda Blair, and Bax von Saito. They give an amazing performance, especially Linda Blair, who was nominated for an Oscar. She deserved that nomination, and especially at such a young age as well. She just, she knocked it right out of the park. I mean, playing a 12-year-old girl who gets possessed by a demon, and, I mean, being taken over by this evil force, and the famous exorcism scene involving I mean, uh, Jason Miller and Vax von Saito. I mean, this is some of the best acting that I have ever seen in a horror film. And, of course, we get the famous The Power of Christ Compels You moment. And, uh, uh, as well as when it, uh, mostly when it comes to Jason Miller's performance as uh, Father Karras, I loved uh, everything w about this character. I mean, you have this priest who is struggling with his faith in God, uh, and it, it's, he continues to lose faith, especially after the death of his mother, and basically his story arc is all about redemption, and when he go comes face to face with the possessed Reagan, and he ends up becoming possessed himself, and he makes the choice to sacrifice himself to save Reagan, and it was just such a powerful moment, especially in the scene that he died. That's just... I mean, this is the type of horror film that I really love. I mean, it, that gives us characters that we completely give a shit about, and that's... It's just... <sighs> gets you right there. It gets you right there. But otherwise, despite that one little scene, there's not really much else that I have an issue with. I really love The Exorcist. I mean, I love everything about it, from its performances, from its script, to its cinematography, from its makeup. There's just... It's, it's nearly flawless for me. So... What else can you tell? I mean, what what else do you want me to? What else will you want me to say about this film? And of course, the score is amazing. So I'm gonna give The Exorcist an A. <sighs> I am finally done with this. Oh, I've been meaning to finish this for a while. It's just uh, a lot of things have been happening with my life, especially, I mean, I also have to get Christmas shopping done, and I have to prepare for, uh, my Christmas special, as, uh, I'll also at the same time, I'll be reviewing a few superhero films, uh, during my Christmas month, leading up to Wonder Woman 1984, uh, there's, uh, one thing I want to add, uh, to this, uh, video, and that is, of course, being uh, HBO releasing, like, certain new releases on HBO Max. At the same time, they're releasing them in theaters. I have very mixed feelings on this decision. And that is, of course, uh, because I always loved going to a movie theater just to enjoy the experience of going to a film... Uh, mostly for the most part, so I can watch a new film and give you my thoughts on that new film. Um, but I also love the experience of going into the theater and just having a good time, just watching the film. But when you add a new film on HBO Max and you could just watch it at home or, or watch it with your friends or whatever, it just doesn't really feel the same as, like, watching it in a theater. So I'm really mixed on this decision, but 
I prefer seeing Wonder Woman 1984 when it hits theaters, so... Yeah, just wanted to get that out of the way. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. I'm looking forward to doing more videos really soon. And if you want my thoughts on old or new movies, of course, you know where to find me.